when they would teach at this point in Christ's life, he was actually teaching a class, kind of like a college class, if you will. And on you know, the four corners of this, this the, the, the shawl he wear, uh, there was four long tassels there, and one of them would actually, as in men of priest, would, uh, 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 from the corner of the garment, would actually drag along the dirt. And she said, if I could just touch that little piece of garment that's dragging on the dirt, <laughs> said, I know I'll be home. Oh. And that's the picture of Christ reaching down in his priesthood authority, saying, I can tell you what you're going to do. <clears throat> he runs further down than I can reach up. Yes. So, verse 31, and his disciples said unto him, and here they had not much faith, said, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and sayest thou, Who touched me? Literally, it was like I went to the day to see Donald Trump. <clears throat> I was on TV, that's never kidding. I told Cameron, if he didn't get me in, I was going to watch Channel 8 next time. <laughs> and so, I mean, God, I got a video ruling. I was the last person to get in one for Last person. My great family and church family ran ahead to run in going to leave me and Lord out. I said, no, I said, I'm the pastor at prayer. And then when the people behind me heard that, they said, we were the preacher. <laughs> <laughs> and that's okay. They lied a little bit, but guess what I got to do when we got past the gate? All right, ladies, get out the tracks. Foo, foo, foo. Here come out there and said, listen, since y'all supposedly joined our church, let me tell you how to get there and something more. <laughs> so we're fundamental, old fashioned love God, Jake, man. And I, I got the witness to him, didn't I? All right, I said, man, you know what? And the woman started crying. He got all choked up. I said, man, I said, you know, I just, I got a sick feeling. I said, why? I said, I almost didn't get in the gate. I said, I wonder how to feel. I look back at other people saying, they were broken hearted, mad, sad. They wanted to get in. They didn't go. Not everyone had said to me, Lord, Lord, in that day. Remember that? And I look back and I feel sorry for them. I wish I could bring them in. And you know, I said, man, what would it be like if you got up to the gate of heaven and God turned you away and said, you can't go home. Man, I got all choked up. I got choked up. Yes. I got to thank God I'm in. How did he get to see Donald Trump? I got in to see Jesus. I, I, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. That's right. Men are governing all this stuff. And you heard your speech, it's all good. But anyway, I say that to you. A lot of things happen. You can never get in. Never get in. Out there, he said this, and then the, so who's strong in thee? You go in there, people bumping into you, pushing in front of you, all that's, I hate it. But I determined my heart, I go in. And hey, for the night you're determined in your heart, you're going in the house. Verse number 32. And he looked round about him, about to see her that had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing that what was done, in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. Now look what happened in verse 22. Jairus fell at his feet. I tell you this, you start falling at his feet, it's a way to get in the house. You start worshiping God, you'll get in. To worship, look this, verse 24, and he said in her, daughter of thy faith that made thee hope. Go in peace and behold thy plague. While he yet spake, get this, there came from the ruler of the synagogue's house certain which said, Thy daughter is dead. Why troublest thou the master any further? And as, or as soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he said unto the ruler of the synagogue, Be not afraid, only believe. And he suffered no man to follow him, save Peter and James and John, the brother of James. Not everybody goes in the house. Now watch this, y'all. We'll get to that point. Verse 38, and he come up to the house of the ruler of the synagogue and see the tumult and them that wept and wailed greatly. And verse 39, and when he was come in, he said unto them, why make you this ado and weep? The damsel's not dead but asleep. But verse 40, look at this. He's getting a little closer now, getting a little closer. He ain't just at the house, in the house, but notice this. And they laughed in the scorn. 
But when he had put them all out, and I say this, is some people got to get out of the house. So you that are in the house can worship. And he said, what is he? All the laughing and the scorners, you got to go. And he said this, out there, and, but when he had put them all out, verse 40, he taken the father and who? The mother. The mother. Now, if you read in Matthew and also in Luke, you'll find out that little girl was how many years old? Anybody know? 12 years old. 12 years old. How old was the woman with the issue of blood? Who had just had a baby 12 years ago and had an issue of hemorrhage, and after that was not ceremonially clean, so therefore she was put out of the house. Get this. And them that were with him, and entered in where the damsel was lying. Not only he came to the house, he came in the house, but he came to the room where she is at now. Tonight, I'm, I'm glad he came to the house. You came to the house. I'm glad he came in the house. But whatever you're facing in dire need and detriment and bad, discouraging time, I want you to know he'll come in the room where you're at in the house, out of the house. We have a guy on preaching that thought. He didn't just come to the house, he came in the house. He did not just come to the house, he came in the house. Because you 
go behind that door, there's something unclean or messy, just a little messy. Topsy turvy. Man, I, I love it when y'all come to the house, to my house. I love it. I love we entertain people. That's why I built the kitchen here. Because we like entertaining people. We love that. But uh, let me say on the contrary, not a paradox, maybe a little bit. I love all of you. I love y'all to come to the house right now. I want to see you're going to be kidding on right now. I like it when you come to the house, but I hate it. The part I hate about you come to the house is because i got to have a clean house for y'all come. And so, so when y'all come into the house, me and her probably had a knockdown down drag up because I hate cleaning the house. <laughs> you women in. Did, did, did Miss Sandra clean the house when you come over the first time? You jump. She probably go into the house there. Clean the house. Y'all preach it Yeah, you got to do that. That's what you ladies do. You scrub the camera creature's back. Y'all know. Y'all know. I don't know what he's got. He said you can't scrub the creature's back. It's crazy, right? But I'm sorry you see the crazy people right here, but <laughs> When we come to the house, and when covenants come in, there's things we get out of the house. Uh, there's doors we close to the house. Uh, and can I say in our spiritual life, what concerns me uh, is that God's come to our house. Uh, God, we let him in our house to a certain degree. But don't open that door because it's a door filled with hurt or sin or heartache or something that's bothering us. So we never open that door. And if you continue to do that, you'll be like a Ding, 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 because something ain't 
you're elevating on top. Are you shorted a nugget in half a meal? You crazy. You don't ever go on door by that. So, I had two guys at that time. I had two guys. Both of them were five teenagers. I was about to kill them. Oh, God. I'm glad I'm getting old now. I'm too old to have kids. And God told me he was going to have a kid. I probably committed suicide. I did a God told me. If God told me we have got another kid, I'd shoot myself right there. But bam, I'm out of here, bud. If you don't mean that, no, I mean that. I can't do it, Lane. You can't either. You can't do it. It'll kill you. It would. It would. It would. It would. But it, I said, what are we going to do? I said, first time I do it, knock that door off the hinge, going to beat that new chachi out of it. That is, that is called Greek for the malarkey. <laughs> that is Hebrew for the... She won't open the door. I said, if you let me go over there, I'll take it on 12 and shoot, kick that door on me, jerk the door off me, and beat her for you. <laughs> and so, so uh, and, and they never did it, and they had trouble with girl. The next thing they did, the other guy, big guy, I mean, he's, he's well for 10. Let's go, I ain't let my daughter do that. So we don't need this doctor. I think I did it here this morning. And this, this girl had tried to kill him one time. And her little sister still emailed and said, Rich, I love you. Got to share the same birthday. Sweet little girl. She's on, I guess she'll have to drive and she's going to come to the church. Her mom and dad split up on that and said, But I didn't mind the daddy's face. Uh, she said, You don't believe what daddy did to me. I said, What did you? He said, Daddy went home after you said that. He took a drill. He took all the hinges off the door. He said, Now I got to sit in my room like this. He watches everything I do. <laughs> <laughs> I want your daddy. <laughs> but what are we doing in our life? There's a door, and you know, and I know spiritually, there may be a hurt or a burden, sincerely. There may be a heartbreak in your life. There may be a burden, a, a, a real downer that gets you down. And every time you open the door, it brings back memories or hopes and pains. So you keep the door closed. I said, 
I called Jason Tillman and stressed out. I saw him. So I went up there. My wife told me she ain't looking good on that. I saw a trash bag. I saw something. I said, well, maybe she ain't got this yet. So I commenced to heaven. If you want any of that stuff back, you call the right six foot dumpster. They might have trailer load in there. If I threw away some of your Sunday school books, I'm sorry. You should have took them home on Sunday when you went to school. And I went there. I don't know. When it turned to build it, I don't know which is sure, the class, which friends. I just went there like crazy. I threw everything out of the cabinet. And Todd held the bag. We threw bags and bags and bags and stuff away. Why? We clean it out. I heard some of your teachers say, we'll clean out and change it. I said, I can hit you on the bathroom to clean that. We have to clean it out. You probably want to go buy some more crayons. Miss Tess said, crayons. They're crayons. You got plenty more crayons. Go buy some more crayons. I'll give you $2 and go get your big 64 pack with a little shock in the back. We didn't go to school when I was in elementary school. Unless you get that big 64 pack, it's big as a bar. And you open a little lid up on it, a little boop. So he's can I borrow your big no, get your own crayon, woman. <laughs> you did not live to you. I got you a book, not a book bag, not a backpack. I love number two. Oh, we went to school. We had a book satchel. Satchel. Book final pleather. Everything was mine. You couldn't have struggled. Have my book satchel, my little coat on. And there, have my, my 64 crayons in there with a sharp in the back. My little fat, chunky pencils. I used chunky up until I was in sixth grade. I wore chunky pencils. I, I mean, I wrote with chunky pencils. I wore chunky clothes. <laughs> I wanted to know some great stuff that y'all know. Miss Garden, Miss Garden. 
swear to God, let's go, let's go. She, she was a hunter when I was a folk group. She taught everybody three generations from Abraham on up. Miss Darling, she was sitting there on my dance. I was a class clown. She was again. God, I hope you don't see her. I hope she, I hope she ain't dead, but she ain't dead. <laughs> Come out, I don't know. I don't know she did. God bless her soul. They come out around her. What my teacher did? Your mom's your teacher, that I don't she did. But uh, Miss Garvey comes. She she said she said she said she does just sometimes. Lady, she come and sit on. She I sit on. I learned, brother Gary. Had I go sit in the front of the days. Well, I got smart like the teacher's page. I said, and Miss Gardner come out. I said, well, the boys, let's talk about it. She come out, she pushed me, put her in, she put all the dance across her legs, said, oh, my dad's like this. Had a 1970 pantsuit on. Had pockets on the side, look like John Wayne's saddlebag. <laughs> and it was, it was the pew. So I said, nah, I know you're laughing now, but if you don't know that room, we'll be good some help. So I did, I think, I'm trying to make you laugh, so we all look sad. So what I did, I said, there, she said, on this, in front of teaching, I sat inside when I did, and look at me, I I get my spit bottle of water, I even chew her baby. Then in her pocket, I, I go, look, I drop it in her pocket. <laughs> <laughs> it landed, they said, stop, kids, stop, and I'm dead. I said, yes, you all stop. I got a little baby. They were really laughing at To wipe her and her nose and on her face. And then, and then he spit all the stuff on her face. Cause he got that, mm, and you're wiping her that taste here and tough. I didn't know that. I was wicked, wasn't I? I was wicked. That was kind of funny. <laughs> but I can say this, I did some stupid things. But there's some doors in me, I don't know where I'm at now, but there's some doors in your life that you hold it closed. Some doors in your life, you're only closed. If you open the doors of God, come in and hit you. Right, right, you open the door, if you'll come in and hit you. Sam Burden, oh, I don't know where it's at. That man knocked his girl's door off the door. And he just had to sit there with a room to go home. But anyway, I was saying this, but Frank, if she could say, you go jerk the door out. You like that? You sit with your little door, you hunt your little Pokemon now with the little door out. <laughs> I'm put on the sign, Pokemon stop here. You have a thousand or something on it. Put for a Pokemon on the phone, run around your neck, so make it work, can't you? Maybe you make some happen. Put Pokemon stop here Sunday. They crazy. Hunt the Pokemon. I tell you this, you better go hunt Pokemon. You better hunt for an answer when God asks God to help you. You better open that door. He said, well, did God knock a door down? No. Somehow I wish he would, but He's not going to be done that. If you're saved with the grace of God, God is more like not going to come and kick your door in and just beat the devil out of your head and wear you up. No, he's going to be merciful, long suffering. And if you open the door, you'll hit me. Right. You want to keep it locked, you keep it locked. That's right. Bob said this, he behold, I stand at the door and knock. Yes. And then we'll open it and knock will come in. <clears throat> but you know why you ain't got that? Because you kept the door closed. This daddy here said, listen, open the door. I've not got anything to hide. Peter, James, John came in with Jesus. And then notice this. Verse 40 said this. And when he had put them all out, the laughers, the scorners, the Pharisees, he said, she's dead. He said, she's asleep. And begin to laugh the Lord to scorn, make fun of Jesus in his house. And guess what Jesus did? He put them out. You realize this will be some things in your house, in your life, in our life, spiritually. That only the Lord can get rid of it, Virginia. Only the Lord can get out. There's some things that I try and try and try. Maybe old habits. Old thing. It's so hard to get rid of. There's some things that only God can get out of the room. I try. I really want help and get rid of that. That one's got to go. Get rid of the discouragement. Which I'm doing good. And, and, and that person at work said this and this and this. And they said this. And then there'll be some people you got to let go. If someone's always detrimental and you get you in a raw mood, you got to let go of that. 
I'm hitting. I've been through it with kids. I've been through it with families. I've been through it with older people, you know, and, and he said, Richard, they said this again. They said, I said, why are you communicating with them? Right. Yeah. Well, they're, they're calling again. They don't answer the phone. Well, that, I try to be nice to everybody. You do that, and they'll walk all over you, and you have footprints all over your face where they walked you in the ground. She said, I got rid of that stuff. He kicked him out. Hey, he got down on He got discouragement. He got all that. The devil's out. Then he knew something. You take care of that. I said, get out of your life. God can help you. Get out the doubt. Get out the double tongues. What that means? That's when you say one thing when they're around and one other thing when they ain't around. If you knew how immature it sounded when you're telling me how bad you hate the other brother or sister or friend. And I ain't going to listen to you first. I'll say, you're crazy. Just keep walking. Notice it. You realize how stupid and, and so childish it sounds to, to, to tear down or try to tear down another brother or sister. Not just to me or to you, but how does that sound to Jesus Christ? He saved you from hell and you don't talk about somebody? Get your double tongue man. I'm telling God through. I believe some people, their, their tongue ain't got that little thing on the water, get loose of both ends. Tied in the middle. And tied in the middle, they're going to rain like a helicopter. Yeah. Get rid of it. Get out of the house and God can help you. Get out of the house and Get now out and help you. Well, they ain't going to do that. You go to that church, God, they think this. And you ever, I don't know, I've seen this in parents and in their children, maybe the, the families that ain't in church. That a child get wrong with God, the mom and daddy goes, well, you're trying to be like your religious folk now. They, you know, they ain't no good and they're this and that. Listen to me, friend, my God. Don't discourage somebody. I tell you right now, I'll probably say this. I dare say 99% of you in here has something in your life that ain't right today. Including me. I'm telling God to the gas country. Things like, I think you're a good boy, I do. But I believe in your little dirty heart somewhere. Probably got something ain't right with God. Might be an attitude. Might be having real enough, having prayed enough. I think on you, because I forget what I said. Man, I don't think you're a godly young girl. There may be something you life that ain't right. But yeah, I believe that. I believe that. Why are people saying that? If we was right with God, we wouldn't need to come to church. Think about it. I mean, just stay, if you're right, I gotta stay home. I'll stay home Sunday if you're right with God. <laughs> Next time, if you're not right with God, I'm gonna give you a hundred dollar and let you stay home. But I, oh, that's who really showed me the biggest liar that God ever let breathe. Because they ain't nothing right with God. They're right down to God through. If you're married, you can't be right with God all the time. <laughs> They're right, brother. Never again, man. Don't let me hang you. Don't let me hang you. Don't let me hang you. I ain't gonna say anything with your heart in your life. And your family. Lose the mind. Lose the doors. Friend, if we can get that room open. We've all done stupid things that you've got to say. Uh, all the people I think probably ain't done nothing stupid in here and probably told the route of God. I'm not picking on you. Uh, and, 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 and tearing you down, but probably only two, three people in here. I think probably fully right with God, and just like Moses or something, probably David Bennington and, 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 and brother sister sister W. Yeah. That's my grandpa or something. <laughs> so you didn't say me. I knew, but I knew you. Mind you, been what been what I'm loving relationship thirty years. When they, if they can get a little bit at the house, we're going to get loud. <laughs> I'm telling you, that's got you hit the grid there. Don't play that with me. Well, we never argued. You're the biggest liar to ever walk. <laughs> I'm telling you now, y'all, don't help me now. Don't leave me hanging. Preach, bro, you're right. Hey, <laughs> Let's stand again.
It came through the house, came in the house, but it came in the room where she had. Quit locking the door, let him in. Let him in. Quit lock, open the door. Let him in. Let him in your heart. If you're not saved, come to Christ. If you're saved and away from God, come back close to him. If you fail the Lord and your family's in a wreck and your heart's in a wreck, your bird on every side, come tell God about it. Say, Lord, I'm getting the key. I'm opening the door. It's not locked anymore. Come on in. Come on in. Come help me, Father. I pray, Lord. For they will play the song for us tonight. I pray you have to keep the doors unlocked and open. That you come in where I'm at, so I can get help from the young God. Touch us, please, and us and help us. Help now as he plays for folk to come just now and get help and strength. And Lord, have not listened to the devil. The lying devil says, well, you shouldn't do that. You shouldn't be messed up. You shouldn't have had that argument. You shouldn't be going through what you're going through. You shouldn't be messing with the Lord. You know my friend. You know I'm with us. You know I'm feeling your God. You know, you know who we are. You know how we feel. You know what we've done. And God, you know my attitude of our heart. Cleanse us, God. We open the door. Come on in, Lord, and touch us and raise us up and help us tonight, I pray. Lord Jesus, in Jesus' name. Oh God, you ever daddy and mama. God is Lord. Relationship.
this first word of prayer.